Tesla manufactures some incredibly efficient electric vehicles, which allows them to provide more range with smaller battery packs than most of the competition. However, beyond just the obvious benefits of a more efficient vehicle to the consumer, I wanna discuss how this efficiency and the ability to put a smaller battery pack in a vehicle while still achieving a great amount of range, I wanna discuss how this gives Tesla a huge competitive cost advantage over the competition. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Tesla is an extremely efficient organization on pretty much every level, and one of the key levels of their efficiency comes down to manufacturing efficiency. The Tesla team is always looking for ways to simplify manufacturing, and as Elon says, the best part is no part. With that same train of thought, the best battery then is a smaller battery that can still provide a good amount of range, and this is something that Tesla has mastered. Now, I do want to give a shout out to Lucid Motors because Lucid Motors has produced an extremely efficient EV, the Air Sedan. As Peter Rawlinson, the CEO of Lucid Motors, has said in the past, there's a big difference between smart range and dumb range. Anyone can throw a larger battery pack in a vehicle to get more range, but of course, when you add a larger battery pack, that adds a lot of cost and also adds a lot of weight to the vehicle, and ultimately, it cuts down on the profitability of an electric vehicle. Now, when it comes to the acceptable amount of range in an electric vehicle, that of course is a completely subjective number. Technically speaking, you probably don't need 300 miles of range for an electric vehicle. However, that's really kind of the magic number, and that seems to be the number that the market really is demanding right now. As we'll talk about in this video, there are a number of companies that now have vehicles with over 300 miles of range, but many of these vehicles have to have very large battery packs to be able to achieve this kind of range. Now, one of the best ways to illustrate the efficiency of an electric vehicle is to look at the battery pack size versus the amount of range of that electric vehicle. And you can calculate how many miles of EPA range you get per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. On this chart, you can see that the Tesla Model Y of these SUV examples leads the pack when it comes to how many miles can be traveled per kilowatt hour of battery pack with the Model X coming in second. The Ford Mustang Mach-E does a pretty good job with an efficiency of 3.04 miles per kilowatt hour. But as you can see, the rest of these SUVs on this chart are quite a bit less efficient. Yes, vehicles like the BMW iX do offer a good amount of range. However, they have to achieve this with a very large battery pack like the iX xDrive 50, which has an over 111 kilowatt hour battery pack. In contrast, the Tesla Model X is able to achieve over 350 miles of EPA rated range with roughly a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, while an extra 11, 11 and a half kilowatt hours of battery capacity may not seem like a huge deal, it actually does matter quite a bit when it comes to cost. According to Bloomberg NEF's estimations, which came out in late 2021, they said that they expected in 2022 that the average battery pack cost for a manufacturer would be somewhere around $135 per kilowatt hour in 2022. Now, while I believe Tesla is, of course, below this average, and I believe Tesla pays less than $135 per kilowatt hour at the pack level, we're not talking about the battery cell level, but the, the pack level, the completed pack. While I believe Tesla pays less than the average, I just wanted to be fair here since I don't have an exact number for Tesla and just be even handed here and take these battery pack sizes and use this $135 estimate to just kind of show a great example with how this might benefit someone like Tesla that is able to achieve more range with smaller battery packs. As you can see on this chart, assuming a battery pack cost of $135 per kilowatt hour, you can see that the Model Y pack would cost just a bit over $11,000 and the Model X pack would cost around $13,000. $500. And when you compare the Tesla Model Y battery pack cost to the Polestar 3 and the Volvo EX90, there could be somewhere near a $4,000 or more difference between the cost of these battery packs for the manufacturers. Now in this example, if Tesla is able to save $3,915 per vehicle over say Volvo or Polestar when it comes to uh, their new SUVs coming out, 
If you manufacture 300,000 vehicles and you save that much money, that equates to uh, $1.174 billion saved. If you manufacture 500,000 vehicles, that equates to $1.958 billion saved. And at 1 million vehicles, that equates to $3.915 billion saved. Another great way to illustrate this is to take our estimated cost here, assuming that $135 per kilowatt hour number. And if you take that cost divided by the amount of EPA range, you can see the average cost per mile of range for that battery pack. Now, once again, for these estimates, I've been assuming an average of $135 uh, per kilowatt hour at the pack level. But I believe Tesla is lower than that now, and they're pushing for much lower than that in the future. At Battery Day, Tesla showed this slide, which illustrated the new trajectory um, in their minds for the cost of battery cells. And battery pack costs is something that Elon Musk recently mentioned in the Q3 2022 conference call when he talked about seeing a path to a $70 per kilowatt hour cost for battery cells. Now, of course, that $70 per kilowatt hour that Tesla is apparently trying to achieve, that is at the cell level. And there is a bit of added cost when you uh, move to the pack level. But based on my research, it seems like on average, once again, based on Bloomberg NEF data, there is about a 23% difference between the cell level cost and the pack level cost on average. So just using that 23% number, that would mean that if Tesla is able to achieve a $70 per kilowatt hour cost at the cell level, it's very possible that that would mean an $86 per kilowatt hour cost at the pack level. And if we use that $86 per kilowatt hour number at the pack level for a long range all wheel drive Model Y with an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, that could mean a cost of that battery pack somewhere a bit over $7,000. So as you can see, since battery packs are so expensive, everything that you can do to not only decrease the size of the battery pack, but still have a good amount of range, but also decrease the amount of cost for a battery pack, that has a huge advantage when it comes to the cost of manufacturing a vehicle. This is one of the factors that have led to Tesla having market leading uh, profit margins and uh, factors like this give them more flexibility as the market slows down and as inflation soars. For instance, in Tesla's most recent investors update, the Q3 2022 update letter, Tesla reported 17.2% operating margin and 27.9% gap automotive gross margin. When you compare these margins to companies like Toyota in their recent investor presentation and also Ford in their most recent investor presentation, you can see that Tesla has a huge advantage when it comes to profitability and battery packs are an important part of this equation. Okay, so as we've talked about, Tesla is able to put smaller battery packs in their EVs because they have very efficient electric vehicles. But putting a smaller battery pack in an electric vehicle has kind of a double effect. It allows you to produce a cheaper vehicle, but it also allows you to produce a lighter vehicle, which is in turn more efficient, which means it gets longer range with a smaller battery pack. It's kind of a double dip thing here. For instance, much in part due to a smaller battery pack, the Tesla Model Y weighs a decent amount less than the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Also, the Tesla Model X, once again, much in part due to its smaller battery pack, it weighs quite a bit less than other electric SUVs that are similar in size. But Tesla not only gains a weight advantage in their battery packs based on the um, size of the battery packs, but they actually have more energy dense battery packs than the competition as well. Now, I recently came across the YouTube channel Motor Matchup, and they have a great video of Tesla versus Lucid talking about efficiency using EPA data. And in this video, the presenter showed how you can calculate road load for an EV using EPA data. Now, when it comes to what road load is, I found a great LinkedIn article by Vibin Jacob, which explained it this way, quote, road load is the force imparted on a vehicle while driving at constant speed over a smooth level surface from sources such as tire rolling resistance, driveline losses, and aerodynamic drag. Vibin goes on to talk about how the EPA uses electric dynamometers, uh, which calculate the relationship between speed and rolling resistance, driveline losses, and aerodynamic drag. And using this equation, the same equation that I saw in that YouTube video, you can actually get the amount of road load for a given vehicle using EPA data. So I pulled up an EPA document for the Tesla Model Y long range all wheel drive. 
and you can see that we have our coefficient numbers there for a, b, and c for our equation. And if you do some quick math based on that formula, you can see that at 60 miles per hour, the road load for the Model Y is around 104.526 pounds of force. So this calculation tells us that the long range all wheel drive Model Y has to put out a bit over 104 pounds of force to overcome rolling resistance, driveline losses, and aerodynamic drag while driving at 60 miles per hour, which is helpful in determining the efficiency of an EV. Now when it comes to a comparison of road load between the SUVs that we've been talking about in this video, you can see that beyond the Model Y, I used EPA data to calculate the road load for the Tesla Model X, BMW iX, Ford Mustang Mach-E, Mercedes EQS, and the Rivian R1S, and you can see that clearly the Model Y and the Model X need less pounds of force to once again overcome rolling resistance, driveline losses, and aerodynamic drag. So as you can see, the Tesla team has developed some incredibly efficient EVs that benefit not only the consumer, but also give Tesla a huge benefit and competitive advantage as well. Uh, do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also if you work in the automotive industry, the battery industry, or if you're an engineer and you have something that you'd like to share with me, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. I also want to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.